Hello again, my name is Garrett Foster, and this is the second tutorial in a multi-part series that is designed to help others learn how to write Grease Monkey scripts. Um, this tutorial is going to cover writing a basic, uh, I guess, screen modifying script. It's not going to cover any page pulls, like we're not going to pull from other pages, we're just going to modify what's on the existing page. So the project that we're going to do today requires you to open up your browser. Um, go ahead and head to Goline Blitz. And then once you're there, load up a player profile of your choice. It can be yours, it can be somebody else's, just as long as it has a scouting bar. I mean, a scouting report here. Okay. Now, if you're seeing numbers in this scouting report, it means you already have a script running. So before you start writing any script, you're gonna you're gonna want to navigate to the page that it's gonna run on, and then go ahead and make sure the other scripts are turned off. So as you can see, um, if I zoom in, the scouting report number is already running. So I uh, again, I'm right clicking on it and then left clicking to turn it off and if I check it by right clicking you can see it's not checked anymore so there's no longer scripts running on this page so I'm going to go ahead and refresh it and it's just a good idea not to have any scripts running whenever you're writing your scripts just to keep things from getting messed up by other people other people's scripts alright so um, this first part is just going to deal with the actual Grease Monkey stuff. Uh, a lot of this will apply to any user scripts that you could use in Google Chrome, uh, Opera, and possibly some Safari stuff. I don't have much much experience with Safari, but I do like to make my scripts uh, Chrome and Opera compatible as well. So, um, but anyway, if you're just using Grease Monkey in the Firefox, you're going to want to learn about it a little bit more. And some of the stuff I'm going to show you, you can learn more in depth. If you there's a there was a good book written uh, ebook written a little while back and if you go to your your search bar and just look, type in dive into grease monkey and without the H name of course give it a search and it's probably going to be your first one as you can see it was written in 2005 it's still a good book it's out of date but it, it, it'll, it'll help you get started if you want to learn some more about some of this stuff at the beginning. Okay. So, uh, let's see. We're going to create our script. So to do that, we are going to use the Grease Monkey uh, indicator down here. We're going to right click on it. It'll bring up this. And you click this that says New User Script it'll bring up this dialog box okay and then in this name field you're going to name the script try to use something I guess pertinent or that describes the script well so we'll call it uh, yeah we'll call it numbers in scouting report you can call it whatever you want I'm just gonna call it that um, as far as namespace uh, this is used to so say we you called your script the same thing I called mine and we all had number numbers in scouting report scripts and then uh, you had both of them loaded up onto your machine um, this namespace I guess it's used to identify or make make a differentiation between multiple scripts uh, normally it's supposed to be a website that you own or administrate um, for some of the scripts I write for Goline Blitz, I'll use Goline Blitz, uh, but it's it's mostly used by the the Grease Monkey inter the Grease Monkey application to tell the difference between scripts with the same name is, is the gist. So I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, but I mean, if you wanted to, you could put uh, your home page or whatever there, and it, it would be just as valid. In the description, you just want to let the user let let the user know kind of a, a quick Twitter or whatever you want to call it about what the script does. So, and I'm just going to tell them that this script will 
put numbers in the scouting report. And you can do whatever you want for your description. You can edit these later too if you decide you wanted something different. And then we have two other fields we need to fill in. Includes and excludes. Includes are pages that it will run on. So any anytime the anytime Grease Monkey sees this page, it will start the script. And anytime it sees an exclude, it'll make sure the script does not start. So um, I generally never need to use excludes, but there are cases where you would need to. Um, however, so with our includes, it's going to start anytime it sees this exact address. So it would only start on this player, obviously, because this is the player ID. So what you need to do is replace that number with an asterisk or a star. Um, it's a wildcard character to Grease Monkey, which means uh, anything uh, will, will, will meet that criteria. So basically the script will, will, will look for all the stuff before the wildcard, and as long as it matches there, you're fine. And that's really all we, we need it to do there. So once you get that, you can click OK. And if you, you follow my first tutorial, you should already have your, your, your editor set up. And it'll load up into your, your text editor. So um, and then you see it, it's already pre-filled in some of your metadata with these, with these tags. So your name, at name, at namespace, at description, at include. You can have as many includes and excludes as you need. Um, these other three, you really only should only have one of. It'll cause problems if you kind of have more than that. And so, um, what we're going to add now is two more tags to the metadata. Uh, this first one is one that I like to use. It's called copyright, and I'm not actually copywriting my scripts. I just like to use it because it doesn't have an author. If it had an add author, I'd use that instead, but it doesn't. So I just like to put the date that my script was first written, and then um, I, I'll normally use my my user name or profile name for the, the for the goal line blitz when I write these. But I mean, it's the same thing for me. You can choose whatever you think is appropriate, and then I at version the version tag, and then. Um, if you use any of my scripts, you know I just you do the date for my for my version tag. If you have a different versioning system, feel free to use it. So it is May twenty eighth. All right, oh five two eight. All right, and then we'll go ahead and again we're we're gonna just do a hello world script real quick, just to let it start up. So if you just type. Um, alert, and then again, this you're going to call an alert function, and then inside of it, you're going to put whatever text you want to pop up. So I'm just going to do hello world. You can do whatever you want, and then at the end, make sure you put the semicolon just to kind of keep it from crashing. All right, and so save that. Let's go back to our page here. Go up, hit refresh. And what do you know? It popped up, and, and an alert is basically a pop up box. It's going to alert you and say, hey, this happened. So it alerted us and told us hello world. You can just click the OK box, and then your page is just, just like normal. So, um, but as you know, most scripts aren't going to run with, with alert boxes, so we're going to need to be a little more fancy. Um, so you can go ahead and get rid of that line because you don't need it. This is kind of a way to see that your script was working. And if, if, if it wasn't working, you may want to go in and just make sure it's checked here. Alright. And if not, you may also want to check your syntax. Just make sure you have your brackets closed and um, quotes on both sides. The same kind of quote. Alright. So I'm going to delete that. 